Hey, what's up guys? Anshul here from Alpha Code. We are into our second lecture of domain driven design and today we will be talking about strategic design. As you know in this crash course series we are in our first part that is domain driven design. So what is strategic design? First let's talk about what is object oriented design. So object oriented paradigm teaches you to think in terms of objects. So sometimes strategic design or domain driven design is also called object oriented design done right. So what do you mean by that? So when you are thinking in terms of strategic design, you need to think in terms of contexts. Now you might ask what is a context? So a context is the setting in which a word or statement appears and that determines its meaning. If any one of you have already done some machine learning work, uh, you might know how important the context is in CNNs or in word embeddings. And context matters. So just look at this picture. You have a pizza slice here and you have a pizza slice here. But they are in two different contexts, right? And it matters, you might pay like for this pizza slice, but you might not take this pizza slice for free. That is because they are used in different contexts, right? So everything that you will think about in strategic design, you need to think in terms of contexts. So let's now talk more about what are the strategic design tools that we have. This figure might overwhelm some of the people. But you don't need to worry about all of these things. This is just a convoluted or complicated figure uh, for a very simple concept. So we are not going to talk about continuous integration as of now because we will talk about it in great detail in upcoming lessons. But rest of the things like bounded context or context map or ubiquitous language. These three are the most important concepts in this whole figure. And all of these things that you see on the right are just part of the context map. So we only care about three things in this figure as of now. So let's go through them one by one. So let's take a simple example first. Suppose you are a civil engineer and you need to build a house. When you are asked to build a house, what will be your first question? You will definitely ask what kind of house do you want, right? Now. There are so many choices for a house and you will ask the owner what kind of house do you want? And suppose he says that I need a farmhouse. What will be your move next? You will talk to the domain expert. What is a domain expert? So domain expert is not a title that you hire for. Domain expert is simply who has a lot of knowledge about that domain. So in this case, you are a civil engineer, right? So you don't have all the knowledge that a farmhouse can have. You only know how to build complicated infrastructures, but you don't know what features does a farmhouse require. So you'll talk to the domain expert who has a lot of knowledge about farmhouses and that might be the owner itself. After that, you will try to find out the core values. What does a farmhouse mean? Or what are the core values for the owner? He wants it for relaxing. He likes green lawns. He needs it to be very secure. He needs to make it for parties. He needs to make it for kids. So things like that. Those are the core values. And then in the end, you will see what other people have done. So you will go to few farmhouses that you think are nice or your owner thinks are nice. And you will try to see what are the common pattern among those or what they have done right. So now after you have gathered all of that information, what will you do? You will basically create a mental picture of that farmhouse. So suppose this is that picture. So after that, you will come up with a model. Of course, these two figures don't match, but I really like that farmhouse, the above one. So I use that picture. It can be anything like it can be circles as well. So. Uh, I've used a pretty picture here, but it doesn't have to be like this. Then you will create a detailed picture of each of the parts of your farmhouse. And then after that, the above one, the farmhouse that you had in mind is called a domain. Your domain is farmhouse for a civil engineer. The domain right now is farmhouse. And these small concerns that you have that a stable is required or a barn is required, shed is required, farmhouse is required. 
in problem space this is known as subdomains right so barn is itself a subdomain and the main gate is also a subdomain stables is also a subdomain garden gate is a subdomain then you will create a model for that subdomain and basically this will be the detailed model and these detailed model are generally known as domain model now these things that you see here the potatoes in blue are known as bounded contexts so these are just complicated terms but they basically means the context within this blue circle is bound so what do you mean by a bounded context we'll talk about it in a minute now these bounded contexts they'll have some relationship among each other and if you create that diagram of how bounded contexts relate to each other that is known as a context map and these terms that you see here like family room breakfast room or master bedroom garage living room dining room whatever all of these terms combined are called as ubiquitous language these were the three things i was talking about right so ubiquitous language bounded context and context map what is a domain model domain model is to a bounded context what classes are to objects domain model refers to the abstraction of the subdomain it is an interpretation of reality so not every aspect of domain can be part of the model right it's the aspects chosen for implementation that constitute the model the uml diagrams maybe or any sort of diagrams and even english sentences can represent various views of the model so why it is called a bounded context because something that means something inside this context might mean something else inside this context or something else inside this context so suppose take an example of the term caretaker caretaker means completely different in here that it means in here caretaker of main gate will mean the security guard so uh, caretakers mean different things in different contexts when you draw the communication lines between these contexts between your bounded contexts that is known as your context map it still might be a little convoluted i can understand that let's go into a bit more detail as i talked about three things are important to you one is ubiquitous language another is bounded context third is context map so let's first talk about the ubiquitous language in terms of software your domain expert your analyst your developer your whiteboard discussions your user manuals specs documentations your test code application code everything everything should use same words for same concepts that means if any two people among here that you can see are talking to each other all other people within the same meeting room should be able to understand so if any one of the people here is doing a whiteboard discussion everyone else should be able to follow the same discussion so you need to name your classes that way you need to name your modules that way because that should correspond to your ubiquitous language so for example sometimes developer become more technical than they should be so for example if you are a civil engineer sometimes an engineer might say that the north east wing room will have 4 is to 5 size ratio and the total area of the room will be 400 square feet i think that's a convoluted statement for domain expert or maybe the owner i think you should make it easy by saying something like the master bedroom will have an area of 15 into 20 square feet right and then in case of software suppose you are implementing search a developer might say this in case of search we will use word cloud and tfidf scores and fuzzy matching to power our autocomplete feature whereas he should say we will be using search keywords frequency to show autocomplete suggestions your domain expert or your analyst doesn't have to know about all the details that you are applying here in your software you should always talk in the keywords that have been decided in your ubiquitous language so we have gone through ubiquitous language now let's talk about bounded contexts and context maps so a bounded context let us take an e-commerce example so suppose you have a sales context a team of 5 people is sitting and all those people are in sales department and when they talk about customer basically customer to them is maybe his id 
and then what his social interests are, what his likes are, what his needs are, or maybe his purchase history, right? Based on that, they will be recommending some products or trying to sell some products to that user. But when you talk about the support department, for them, customer is something else. For them, only thing matters of a customer is his history with the company, his order history, and tickets that he has raised previously, right? For accounting, they only need how much amount the user has paid, what was the method of payment so that they can refund something back uh, to the same customer when they talk about customer. And the order department only cares about the addresses of the customer and whether he's available on particular time or not. So these four things completely have a different take on customer. This is a bounded context. Customer means something else inside this boundary customer meal something else inside this boundary. So you have four bounded contexts here and each of them will have their own domain model and their own ubiquitous language. So when someone talks about within sales context, everyone else should be able to understand what they are talking about. When someone talks here, everyone else uh, should be able to understand what they are talking about. And each of these contexts will have their own database and own API and own user manual and they will all conform to the same model that has been developed for this, for each of these contexts. So now I have drawn the bounded contexts. When you draw the relationships among bounded contexts on a paper, it is known as the context map. How these contexts interact with each other. So let's summarize what we have learned so far. There are two spaces, one is problem space, one is solution space. I hope you remember when you studied about functions, function meant taking some input from an input space and transforming it to an output space. So if you have y is equal to 2x, basically your input space is x where you will put 2 and that will get transformed to 4 in that output space, right? So similarly in your problem space, so there are two sets of terminologies. One is in problem space, one is in solution space. Many people get confused within this, so I'm just making it clear for you. So domain will be divided into subdomains and then there can be many types of subdomains. There will be core subdomain, there will be supporting subdomain and there will be generic subdomain. There's a saying that if your core subdomain is not the best part of your architecture, your architecture is not yet complete. What that means is that don't try to be best at everything. So there will be some core subdomain. Suppose you are into banking subdomain. You don't have to be best at suppose identity access management, right? That will be a generic subdomain. And in particular, you won't invest too much time into generic subdomains. You will generally try to buy it from the shelf in the market. In solution space, you will have a domain model as we described for each bounded context, you will have a domain model. You will have bounded contexts. Each bounded context will have its own ubiquitous language. And all of these combined, when you draw the relationships between your bounded contexts, that is known as your context map. So we have studied about these three things. Now let's quickly go through what these things are. These things are nothing but the type of relationships that bounded context can have. I'm not going into too much detail here, but I encourage you to go through them. So the last statement that I want to emphasize on that it's the developer's understanding not your knowledge that becomes a software. And this is very important to understand. The first job of the developer is not to code, but first of all, understand the domain he's going to code. And domain driven design is a toolbox actually. And the good thing is that it is technology agnostic. That means it does not depend on any technology. And this toolbox is mostly guaranteed for your life. So that will be all for today. Thank you.